Okay, next up we have Christopher Green Smitzinski talking about parks, spawns, nests, and Pikachu, OSM and Pokemon Go players. Take it away. Hi, hey, everyone. <clears throat> uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, Jess, for the introduction. I just wanted to say real quick, thank you very much to all the organizers for putting this on. I know that this is no small feat. And also thank you very much to the American Sign Language English interpreters for being here. Um, I really appreciate that. So um, my name is Christopher Green Spachinski, and I am here to talk about Amer uh, OpenStreetMap and Pokemon Go and how the former has created information that this, the latter has leaned upon to uh, make a more ro robust augmented reality game. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Pokemon Go, uh, which I'm guessing that you probably are, but if you aren't, it's uh, a mobile game that was released in 2016 it is. It was created by a company named Niantic in collaboration with Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. And it's available for iOS and Android devices. It's had over a billion global downloads. It's grossed more than six billion dollars in revenue, um, and it's a lot of fun. So if you're interested in exploring the world and playing video games, this is a nice mashup of those two things. Uh, so I'd like to talk about how OSM appears in the game of Pokemon Go and kind of talk about some of the tags that are used and some of the responses that we can have to new editors of OpenStreetMap. Uh, so there are four, at least four different ways in which Pokemon Go uses OSM data. Um, it uses it in the base map, it uses it in monster spawns and biomes, it uses it in nests, which are a special kind of biome, and it uses it in something called souvenirs. If there is just one thing that I could tell every Pokemon Go player who was interested in editing OSM, it would be this. Niantic takes periodic snapshots, which means that changes are not live. Um, we do get a couple of people here and there who make an edit, and then they change it back in two weeks, and they're trying to test things out. Um, for each of these four functions, Pokemon Go takes separate snapshots every month, every six months, every two years. It's very random, but the players kind of suss out when and how that's used. There are a lot of myths and misunderstandings in the Pokemon community, which is exacerbated by people who have imperfect knowledge, who are rushing to make clickbait articles or be the first on YouTube or social media. And so players use this information, sometimes imperfect information, because they're highly motivated to map in order to get Pokemon Go benefits, which makes sense, right? So the first one, and probably the easiest, is visuals, right? So uh, Pokemon Go uses a variety of tags to show water, to show green space, to show uh, buildings, to show highways as you navigate the real world inside this video game. The next several features, it's helpful to understand what an S2 cell is in order to understand how OSM is used. So if you imagine a globe and we divide it into smaller and smaller pieces, those are called S2 cells. It was originated by, I believe, Sidewalk Labs inside Google, and it's a really great algorithm to subdivide the Earth into smaller, more manageable pieces. Uh, Pokemon Go uses these S2 cells for a variety of functions, such as geo-blocking countries that shouldn't have access to their game, or Pokemon that only appear in certain regions, uh, what kind of weather is going to appear in the game where you are, spawn points, gyms, all kinds of stuff. Um, each level might have a different function. Spawns use a level 20 S2 cell. So the world is covered in these tiny cells, and some of them do spawn Pokemon, and some of them do not. The spawn data, the best theory where it came from is originally Niantic was housed under Google and Google anonymized their cell phone mobile data, gave it to Niantic, and it appeared in their first mobile game, Ingress. That, when Niantic took over the Pokemon Go project, was inherited into Pokemon Go, and then Pokemon Go has made some changes, additions, and removals over the years. So the biggest one for us to watch out for as OSM users is probably footpaths. Footpaths at a couple of points have had Pokemon start to appear on them. Um, and so we get footpath spam sometimes. And then also there are some tags which seem to remove spawn points like schools and wetlands and construction. Um, and then there's some limited evidence to suggest that maybe some kinds of railways and basins and power lines do so as well. Our best guess is that each of these cells has kind of a biome which is derived from some known and unknown data. 
uh, for example, being within a certain number of cells of a water feature seems to have a chance of making a biome a water cell, but there are so many unknown factors here. This is an ongoing area of research by the player base, and it changes with events, with the seasons, with the weather, so it's a very quickly moving target. Nests are a specific type of biome. So you will have these polygons, which are imported from OSM, such as the infamous park, leisure equals park. And inside that polygon, instead of random Pokemon appearing, around a quarter of the time, a specific awesome Pokemon will appear, or maybe just something like a Spinarak. And so if you're looking for a specific kind of Pokemon, you might find where it's nesting, and then you head to that location, and then you can catch a bunch of them all at once. This is one of the big misunderstandings by new Pokemon players. It's that all parks equal nests. Uh, the truth is that there are lots of features that are accommodated in Pokemon Go for nests. This is the second thing that I really wish new Pokemon Go editors knew, that lots of features that make sense with ground truth can turn into Pokemon Go nests. So we have a lot of park spam even though people could probably just cover their neighborhoods and their cities with the appropriate ground cover and it would still be picked up by, by Niantic as a nest. Um, so this is another area where we see lots of vandalism. Uh, the last piece of OSM influenced data is through buddy souvenirs. So this is not a huge game impact, but this does, it's part of the game. And you can have a, a partner Pokemon who follows you around as your buddy, and they sometimes go off and find different items and bring them back to you. And it's a cute little thing that you can remember your Pokemon by. Uh, some of these souvenirs only appear by certain features. So shells only by the coastline and river stones only by water and things like that. Um, the Silf Road is an organization that's done a whole lot of research in this area. So if you're interested in this, I would encourage you to check that out. Um, when did the vandalism start occurring? Well, as soon as people figured out that OSM was a data source for Niantic's game, we started seeing vandalism. Um, the interesting thing is that Niantic never officially announced a partnership with OpenStreetMap or announced that they were using OSM's data, but the player base figured it out and it spread like wildfire along with some of these myths. And then we started seeing vandalism. Um, there was a really great presentation that was done at the state of the map in 2019 by Tessio Novak that looked at the effects of Pokemon Go vandalism on OpenStreetMap. And one of the things that caught my eye was this chart, um, which I have screen capped. Um, it looks at how there are times of great vandalism, times of very little vandalism. And when I saw this, I immediately recognized these two peaks because as a player in Pokemon Go, and if I can just edit this, um, I could see, oh, why was there a huge increase in vandals? Well, it's because there was a visual update right before that, and then people realized that they could make changes and have them show up in Pokemon Go. And then in the middle of those second two peaks was the Nest update. So a whole bunch of information was pulled into the game for Nests. So um, you can see that this is, can be somewhat predicted by in-game changes. I will also say that this, uh, study saw that um, when people who were vandals were engaged by members of the OSM community, uh, about a third of them responded, and many of them actually became converted and started becoming mappers. But one thing that I thought was notable was that only about half of the people who vandalized actually were uh, had been had their change sets com uh, commented on. Uh, which I think is a huge missed opportunity. Um, we can go through and we can revert and we should revert, uh, but while we're doing that, I think that we can encourage those people to join our community because Niantic has accommodated a lot of our tags to become part of their game. And also OSM is used for a wide variety of other functions. And I think the more people understand that, the more they value the project and database as is. Uh, the reason that I mention this chart is because very recently, Niantic has announced officially that they are updating the map, and this went on the Niantic blog. So um, we're going to have a bunch of new friends incoming. So get your OSM cha uh, filters ready and start looking for parks and footpaths and things like that. 
Um, if you're on Slack, if you're on Discord, we've already been watching and looking at those. Um, and see if you can maybe engage with some of these mappers and see if we can convert them while we are reverting them. Um, I will say, I mean, all of us here probably agree with this, but OSM is the commons, right? The more people who understand how to appropriately use our tools, uh, the better for everyone. Uh, I was not always a welcoming person, uh, but over time I've realized the value of trying to encourage new people to be part of our community. If you're interested in more information on this, uh, there's a really great page on the OpenStreetMap wiki, which is tips for new Pokemon Go mappers. So if you're not sure what to say to somebody who's vandalizing, you can just copy them to the wiki. It's a great resource. The Sylph Road has a science team. So this is a group of players of Pokemon Go who tried to suss out all the different mechanics inside the game, some of which are OSM things, some of which are, have nothing to do with us. Um, and then the second link that's up there from the Silk Road actually has a timeline of the various snapshots that were imported into the game. So you can kind of see the patchwork of imports that has created this confusion in the Pokemon player community. Um, and then also check out the Save the Map 2019 presentation. Um, it was a really, really good one looking at vandalism. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, I am keeping an eye on comments, so if anyone has any chat questions, please let me know. Um, you also can message me on OpenStreetMap. I am Christopher GS. Thank you very much.